Yeah. The last one standing. Nobody else left. So you can technically pull one through. Can we stand the car? Yeah, dude, go for it. Really? Yeah, jump in. On the other side, though, because the, the stuff in the passenger. Well, you can open the passenger if you want. You both can sit in there. This might have to move move the walkie-talkie out of the seat. That's how we. That's how we oh, communicate with, nice car. with everybody. Nice. Jump in, man. I'd let you rev it, but you know, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> this is so cool. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. You ever been in one? No. First time? Yeah. What do you think? It's pretty cool. Like a race car, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So welcome back to the channel everybody, welcome back to another new video and today we're going to shoot the video on the road with my daughter and one of her friends and we're going to Cars and Coffee uh, and I want to talk about the Demon. There's a lot of people upset because of the new Demon 170 and those people who are upset are 2018 Demon owners. They believe that their cars are suddenly going to plummet in value and I would not be surprised if they don't get together with some trial lawyer to sue Dodge, just like the Durango owners did. Now I understand on principle, that seems like a great idea, but if you've ever been involved in a lawsuit, whether you're a plaintiff or a defendant, it is not fun. There is nothing fun about it. There's nothing intriguing about it. There's nothing exciting about it. Maybe the first couple moments in a courtroom are, are exciting, but when you're the one that's taking up all this time to try to, try to have some guy who chases ambulances for a living to try and make your case when you didn't have any real damages you've got to scratch your head and wonder why in the hell did I do this and I believe that if people with demons decide to sue that's how they're gonna feel and for sure how they should feel and I apologize but your cars aren't going down in value I'm gonna share more about that once we get on the road you ready hey, why don't you put some clothes on <laughs> All right, let's go. What a beautiful day today it is. It's going to be probably 85, 90 degrees, sunny and gorgeous. And we're headed down to Cars and Coffee in South OC by the beach. This is going to be nuts. And what you're seeing right now with all that sunshine through the window probably blowing out my exposure is exactly what I am seeing and she's following me close again we're gonna have to learn a lesson here so you don't run into me again Yeesh. wow look at that old Toyota Real. very cool South Orange County on this toll road which is not an old road but I gotta tell you in this Lamborghini there are some spots where it's completely uneven because whoever built this freeway must have been drinking that day that will literally throw your back out it's uh it's insane I'll try to catch the amount of fluctuation right here you might be able to see it that is ridiculous <laughs> it's, not, it's just rough for this next few hundred feet oh my gosh this is so stupid like, how could they how could they let that happen of course not everybody's in a car that's two inches off the ground with super hard suspension so they don't feel it but whew, do i feel it Civic flies by, flexing, flexing on the Lambo. That's a Civic, he was like riding my butt and stuff and then 
he's like really angry. So I would just, I don't know, go watch him. Yeah, he's got that double clinch on the steering wheel with the angry forward facing. He hates our pink and yellow car look. Yeah. We will let him go on his way. All right, so we'll uh, have a conversation on the way there. And you'll see the camera bouncing a little bit because um, not enough money spent on infrastructure. I don't know, seems kind of uh, telling how this whole EV thing is going to go. If they can't even get the roads fixed, they can't even get the roads right, how are they going to build charging stations everywhere? Anyways, that's not what this video is about, but I still got to throw that out there once in a while because it's just so stupid. Go back and watch my other video about that topic where I try to make that point and get it across. So let's talk about the Demon. So those of you with, with the 2018 Demon are so incredibly fortunate and congratulations on reaching a point of success in your life and connections to have been able to to uh, get yourself in on one of those spectacular cars in 2018. MSRP I think was right around that 85 to $90,000 range and markups are running. I, I, you know, the ones I saw were, they weren't, they weren't doing like $50,000 markups. They were just doing a sticker price addition, taking the price up to like 150. So one by my house I saw for 150 and it was pretty clear back then that if you wanted a Demon in 2018, it was gonna cost you 150, and you had to know somebody to be able to get in on it to get it. Because, of course, there were only 3,000 of those things made, numbered cars, and people were lined up to get them. So, they were gonna, every single one of them was gonna sell, every single one of them was gonna sell in short order, and pretty much every single one of them was gonna sell with a giant markup, with exception, of a handful of you that are about to comment right now and tell me that you got your 2018 Demon for MSRP and maybe right around that $90,000 range optioned and you are lucky and you got a special crate with race gear and I mean you know you were the first one to get that giant air grabber intake and that enormous hood scoop. I believe uh, that was the first wide body, correct me if I'm wrong. So you got a wide body right out of the gate. You got a car that was built by Dodge when it was owned by Fiat, Chrysler, and not Stellantis. So you got the pre-Stellantis Demon, which I believe for sure makes it, uh, makes it special. And primarily because and forgive me, Stellantis, but they're not doing, I don't think they're doing great things for Dodge. So if they may go down in history as being the company that destroyed everything that, that Dodge was when it came to the Hemi cars. I don't think they're gonna be remembered for the Dodge Caravan minivans. They're gonna be remembered for the Hemi cars. And I don't know that they're gonna come out with something that's gonna be iconic enough to create that passion again. So, the 2018 Demon was built when there was no end in sight other than just building more exciting cars year after year, and then Stellantis comes along and they're killing it. So, I believe if, if regular Hellcat jailbreaks, red eyes, if a King Daytona or a Black Ghost is going to be worth a fortune if it's kept with very low mileage and very good condition and kept for many, many years, then why would your 2018 Demon drop in value because they named the new 170 a Demon? It won't. And if you look on Auto Trader Car Gurus, you look online right now, if anything, the Demon prices have increased. The low mileage Demon prices have increased. They are high. People are wanting a lot of money for them because there's a good chance very few people will be able to get their hands on the 170, just like very few people get their hands on the 2018 Demon. But now, there's all those speculators who bought the 2018 Demons 
hoping to make a killing that are putting them up right now with all the excitement around this being the last year of those Hemi cars wanting to juice those things for big money. So you'll see them in the 200s, the 250s, the 300 range. You'll see crazy prices. And the lower mileage, the better condition, the rarer the spec, the more money they want for these cars. Are they getting them? I don't know. I mean, you know, they, they pop on and off the internet periodically and I don't know if they, they sold or they just stopped, just decided not to sell them. But I'll tell you, the prices have not gone down. Now, yes, it's true. If you want a Dodge Demon for $120,000, you might actually be able to get one. Um, it's going to have a ton of miles. It's going to have likely have been in an accident. By the way, a lot of them that I did call on, the 2018s, because that was one option this year, is maybe I'll just go find one of those if people are selling them, and there is a lot of them for sale, it seems like, that if I can get one in the 125 range, man, I'm going to do it. What the, I don't care if there's miles on I'm going to drive the car anyways. And what I found is they were in accidents, but they don't they don't always put them in the, in the listing. And what happens is one of the dealers who had had one of those 2018 Demons said, well, it's, it was a small fender bender, but I just gotta tell you up front, because I, I asked straight out, was it in an accident? And is there a Carfax on it? And does is it on the Carfax? Because I'm gonna have to pay for that later on. And the answer was, let me check. Yes, now look at that. What is that? Is that a Demon? That would be so perfect. No, but that's a Hellcat. Very nice Hellcat. I know that guy. Hey. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching the channel. Hopefully you're watching this video. So, you know, if you want to get a cheap Demon, still 120. Now keep in mind, the car was 85 grand, 90 grand, brand spanking new MSRP. But if you paid 150 for the car, you're upside down. You lost money. If you paid 120 for the car, you're still in great shape. But remember what I tell you all, if you pay a markup, if you pay over MSRP, you're basically giving the dealership all the appreciation, most of the appreciation, probably for the next 10 years. So just, just understand that, whether it's a Demon 170 or a 2018 Demon, or it's a Hellcat, or it's a Jailbreak, or it's a King Daytona, if you pay fifty or $100,000, the more you pay, the longer you'll have to wait. And the better condition, the lower mileage, you'll have to keep on that car to be able to re recoup your money. And a lot of demon owners are finding that out. So the only reason they would be mad right now is one, because they believe that Tim Kaniskas lied to them. Tim Kaniskas didn't lie. At the time Tim said that, they believe, he believed it. He didn't. He also didn't know that Stellantis would buy the company and destroy the Hemi cars. He didn't know that at that time. So he didn't get up and say, "Oh, we're the only demon we're ever going to build." Build and then, boom, just you know, knew when he was saying that that I'm lying to you guys. So I shared this before in other videos, so I won't belabor the point. Bottom line is, when this opportunity came up to build a final, final last call monster. They had to name it something, and I thought this through 10 ways from Sunday, that had they named it anything other than the demon, people would be even more mad. Here's why. That would stand to very likely reduce the value of the demon more than calling this one the demon, because the demon has an iconic name, a brand equity, a brand equity that's been built into that name since 2018 that makes that car iconic. It gives it a cachet about it. Any new car with a new name would have to reestablish, completely reestablish that brand equity again. And maybe the name would have been Goofy if it was the Ghoul or it was who knows? Uh, I, some people put names in my in the comments. I can't remember. But if they called it something else, then all the demon owners would say, "Well, now I wish I had a ghoul, and I got all I got's a stupid old demon." No, the lineage of the demon now ties that original. Actually, it ties the 1971 and 72 Dodge Demon, which was a Plymouth Duster, together with the 2018, and together with the. 2023, which does, I believe, increase the value and make those older cars more sought after because it just adds to the brand equity of the demon name. And there is value in a name. There is value in brand. 
That's why Louis Vuitton, Gucci, you name it, Mercedes, Rolls Royce, they can charge more for cars that are generally like Rolls Royce that are BMWs rebadged, Lamborghinis, Audis rebadged. The name has value. People want that name. And in the Demon, people are gonna want the 2018. And the dream is to have the trifecta, have the original early 70s Demon, and then have a 2018 Demon, and then have the 2023 Demon lined up in your garage. And could you imagine having similar VIN numbers, at least on two out of the three cars? That would be incredible. It would be a dream come true. And that improves the value. So, the last thing I'll share with you before we show up to Cars and Coffee is, if you look at over time, just something as simple as the 1971, I believe they made it in 72 also, Dodge Demon built on the Plymouth Duster platform, that that car retailed MSRP for, I think, under $5,000 at the time, probably close to $5,000 at the time. Today, those cars are trading on the open market between 40 and I believe there's some seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, but generally they're in that forty dollars to $50,000 range if you want one of those cars. Now, do the math on the, the improvement in price from then. Now, of course, if you factor in inflation and all that fun stuff, here comes some more fun roads. Oh man, if a filling pops out of my mouth while I'm driving, just don't laugh too hard. But if you look at the appreciation, if somebody bought that thing for, for $4,500 in 1971, and today they can get $50,000 and they kept it in their garage, they kept it nice, and they you know they enjoyed it once in a while, but they kept the miles relatively low, they might get 70, 80,000 for the car. If they drove it, had fun in it, the car still, now mind you, we're talking about 50 years later, that car still, could very likely get forty to fifty thousand dollars with miles, having been driven, having been raced, having been used as it should have been used, which is for fun. So I believe wholeheartedly that whether you have a 2018 Demon, a 1971 Demon, or a night or a 2023 Demon, every one of those cars have been lifted by them launching the Demon 170. I will tell you, I, I work in a business where I, brand is so important, brand is so critical, brand instills trust, confidence, and tons of cachet, and people people love brand, and the Demon brand now, tied with Dodge being the last one, lifted, and it will continue to lift the 2018 Demon and revive the excitement around that car. Go look at the new views on YouTube of the 2018 Demon announcement launch with Tim Kaniscus. It's blowing up. People are in love with that car again, meaning they're willing to pay more to have that iconic car. And with the front fender flares, even though it's 16 pounds heavier, it looks better than the 170. I'm sorry, I, I had to say it. No, 170 is amazing. Love that car, but God, it's, and I get why they took the front flares off for weight, and it just makes sense to not have the big wide tires in the front, but you know, the uh, 2018 Demon is just gonna look better driving down the road, no matter how you cut it. But the Demon 170 has that badge and 1,000 horsepower, so I don't know, I love that both of them. All right, everybody, so hopefully you enjoyed today's video and hopefully that information makes sense. I'm not trying to bash or beat on anybody or make any of you feel bad, but you know, there's not a lot of room or time in this world for us to sit around and be angry about our demon or, or anything right now because we're all privileged and incredibly blessed to, to have been able to get our hands on any of these cars while they've been around because they're not going to be around anymore. So with that, everybody, like, subscribe, comment, stay motivated, be respectful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Let's catch us a Hellcat. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. So nice.